So for those of you that know me a little bit, uh, Brian had to really convince me to come here and talk about myself because I find it very difficult to talk about myself. So for the next 90 minutes, <laughs> you guys are going to hear me pontificate about how awesome I am. So it all began in 1990. My mom and dad had too much to drink. Just making sure everyone's alive. Just making sure everyone's paying attention. But to give you a quick background on where I came from, I was born in Minnesota, moved around a lot as a kid, but I was in St. Louis from kindergarten through high school. I come from a long line. You guys are going to think I'm going to say overreactors, that line in Father of the Bride, but I come from a long line of athletes. My grandfather played 11 years in Major League Baseball. My uncle played 20 years on the PGA Tour. A couple other uncles played pro soccer, while another played minor league baseball. My brother played in MLS after going to Stanford. My sister played at St. Louis U, just down the road, and is now in their Hall of Fame. The best of them of all was my father, who played eight years in the NASL, is now working for this great club, St. Louis City. But I'd be lying to you if I said he they were the greatest, because my mom sitting at that table right there, if you saw her hit a golf ball, she would tell you that none of us are as good of an athlete as she is. <laughs> but I'm telling you that because St. Louis made all of us. I'm also telling you that because if we were sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner table, and my mom looked at my siblings and I, and said, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? And my brother and I and sister would have said teacher, doctor, or accountant. I mean, with all due respect, those are great occupations. I'll be an accountant. But the truth is, <laughs> all of us were put on this earth to do something. And all of us know that. As we're older and some of the young faces, you'll find out as you grow up. All of us were put on this earth to do something. But in my family, that was meant to be on a competitive field. But to win a World Series for the Yan Yankees, to play golf and compete with Tiger Woods for 20 years, to tackle Pelé, and my father tackled him and got a few yellow cards, maybe a red card, Dad. But that would define who they are as people. And that didn't define my family. That defined what they did, but not what they are as people. And the reason why I tell you that is not to brag and to tell you about my lineage and what my bloodlines are. It's because that's what this city is about. I went to a high school, be a men for others. This city is about giving back. And the city of St. Louis made my family that could look at all the pedigrees in the world. And I've learned this going to ESPN and Art and I were talking about my uncle's golf career, whatever it may be. And yet every single athlete in my family loved St. Louis and represented St. Louis to the best of their ability. And quite honestly, it made me the man I am today. This city made me the man I am today, but more importantly, it gave me the platform to achieve any dream that I wanted to do or to become, and I'm still doing that to this day. So I'm up here saying, thank you, St. Louis. I want you to listen to something because I'm gonna come back to it. Adversity builds character. Honestly, that never made sense to me. Adversity reveals character. Because if you say adversity builds character, that means every single person in this room, no matter if it's an athlete or a donor or a parent or the keynote speaker, started at zero with no character in that category. You guys want to tell me? that the athletes that you just saw in that video, adversity builds it? No chance. Adversity reveals character because every single person in this room, on some level, different degrees, no matter what it may be, we have faced adversity. And yet all of us are here having a couple drinks, having a good meal, supporting an unbelievable organization like Special Olympics. And that is what I'm gonna tell you is the revelation of character. It's not building it. And that's why I'm so passionate about Special Olympics. What Special Olympics does for athletes and why I feel so privileged to be here is because too often in our society, we resonate with what we cannot do versus what we can do. We are constantly reminded what we can't do and what our disability is versus what 
our ability is. And I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And what's crazy is on November 12th, 2022, at about 8.10 that I'm saying that. Because on August 30th, 2008, my life changed forever. David Beckham and the LA Galaxy were in Boston, so picture this. Every single female in my phone was calling me for a ticket. And to be honest with you, David Beckham's so beautiful, my dad and brother were still asking for a ticket as well. So I, I understood. <laughs> But you got a sold out Gillette Stadium. It's an unbelievable night. LA Galaxy are there. David Beckham's gonna make his debut in Major League Soccer. And I did something that I've done with my eyes closed. Score goal. Except this night was different. The ball came in, I jumped up, headed the ball, by the way, back to the net, because that's the only important part of this story. And I'm gonna tell you, the ball did go in. But I got a serious brain injury. And in the blink of an eye, it was gone. I was on my way to go to England to become the second highest paid player ever in U.S. history. I was going to go to the 2010 World Cup, play for the United States, which is honestly every athlete's dream. You saw it in that. doesn't matter where you are to wear red, white, blue and to play for your country. There's nothing better. It was gone. The next two years of my life were the darkest days of my life. I was trying to rehab. I was trying to find peace with how I can continue my career. I was trying to be able to do things that I used to do. Go to movies, work out, look at a computer, look at my cell phone. None of that I could do. And ESPN gave me a call and said, we think you'd be on TV. Now, if they would have called anyone in my family, they would have said, you're idiotic to think Taylor would be good on TV. Because honestly, if you ever listen to him talk, the truth is, I started to learn and understand what my next life was going to be. Until I met a Special Olympics athlete in Boston. And I thought that athlete was coming up to me because I was the fastest player to score 100 goals in MLS. I was former MVP. I was the leading goal scorer for the US national team. And all he said to me was, man, you get to broadcast on TV? I want to be on TV too. And we all laugh and smile. He saved my life. See, my entire adult life, I thought every goal I score, every award I, I achieve, every trophy I win, that's what everyone's going to remind me. And re sorry, excuse me, remember me for. And yet if you Google me right now on your phone, list 1 through 10 is what? Taylor Twelman, concussion. Because it gave me the ability to be a voice of change and to evolve sports in traumatic brain injury. If I didn't meet that Special Olympics athlete in Boston that day, I wouldn't have known that because my new ability, not my old disability, my new ability was to create social change for concussions, to commentate for ESPN and be on TV, which I've done for the last 13 years, to be a father, to play golf. See, we all want to identify with what we can't do. And yet the truth of the matter is, if you live in the moment, and if you live in what you do right now, it's what we can do. Because right now you can sit here and make a difference for Special Olympics. That's what we enjoy. The only guarantee we have in life, because I thought I was guaranteed the World Cup. I thought I was guaranteed to play in England. The only guarantee I have is to speak for you, with you guys in front of you, which is an absolute privilege, and then afterwards, take my mom and dad out for dinner. Because that's what life is. That's what it, I enjoy. That's what we all enjoy. But we have to live in the moment. Too often, we live with what we can't do. And Special Olympics taught me that. Special Olympics taught me that no matter what your circumstances are, it doesn't matter. Because what you can do right now in the moment is the only thing that you can control. These athletes have the ability, and I'm telling you, if you've never experienced it, you have no idea what you're missing. They have the exact same competitive nature that my dad did when I was 10 years old in the backyard, and I have bloody shins. They're as competitive as anyone that I've ever met. They don't know the difference, so why should we tell them? All of you are here tonight because we want to live like that. We want to enjoy with whatever ability we have. That's 
what we want. The point of life is what? Not how much money you make, not what car you drive, none of that matters. It's about being fulfilled and being happy. And the only way you do that is you live each day for what it brings. And the Special Olympics organization and athletes did exactly that. And in 2011, they saved my life and I thank you for that. I'm gonna leave you with this. How many of you know how a pearl is made? We all raise our hand, right? We know where a pearl comes from. It comes from an oyster. But do we know about the process of that pearl? Because that grain of sand that goes into that oyster is the worst experience of that oyster's life. <laughs> and yet, what's the gift? That beautiful pearl. How many of us right now could reflect on our lives and say, I remember that grain of sand. Because mine was getting punched in the face for a bowl. And you would have asked me those two years, three years, four years, I would have said, there's no way I'm gonna recover. Well, here I am standing in front of you, in front of this place, which everyone told me in my entire life was never gonna come. So remember, that grain of sand could be traumatic, could be the worst part of your life, but at some point that pearl is gonna come out. And my pearl is that in 2023, we will have 7 million kids take the Think Taylor Pledge about owning their education and awareness of concussions. And if you would have told me that before I met that special athlete in Boston, I would have told you no chance this is gonna happen. Special Olympics is very, very good at opening all of us that are blind right now in the moment. And so I dare you and I beg you to experience something that they give because the competitiveness with this group of players is unlike anything you've ever seen. Thank you.